Welcome to Get What with k and &E. I'm Kelsey. Um, I'm a brand new children's librarian and I am excited to be hanging out with my bestie, Elizabeth. Uh, as Kelsey said, I'm Elizabeth. Um, I am a current grad student and a small business owner and I am an avid audiobook user and as well as a public library user. So we thought we would start with a real quick run through of the booktube newbie tag. First question is, why did you start this channel? Um, we thought it would be a really fun way to connect with each other. We live um, thousands of miles apart and also we love to read and we love to talk about reading. So we thought this would be a, a fun way to do that. What are some fun and unique things you can bring to booktube? Well, we are two white women in our 20s, so we're very unique on BookTube. Real <laughs> diverse addition to BookTube. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But I mean, it's one of us is straight, so. <laughs> I mean, that's an improvement, I guess. Um, but uh, in seriousness, we are both librarians and art historians by training. And uh, we're also two very, very different readers. Not only do I mostly consume books via audiobook and Kelsey mostly actually physically or digitally reads book, um, we just kind of uh, analyze things differently and, and view the world a little bit differently. And so we get kind of good, good discussion, good challenge going. So that's what we're hoping to, to provide is a, a little bit of a critical analysis. Yes. Yeah. Um, what are we most excited about for this new channel? We're excited to get to know the booktube community and hopefully make some new friends. Why do we love reading? What a difficult uh, question. <laughs> like, ugh, I don't understand how people don't love reading. It just means they haven't found the right book. But uh, our biggest reasons are escapism, education, and connecting with other people and ideas. Absolutely. And that reading has always defined our lives. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Which, like, going into that, that we've always been defined by reading, what book or series got you into reading is the next question. And neither of us has any memory of starting to read. We've just always been readers since we could remember, and we've always loved reading. What questions would you ask your favorite booktubers? Can you bless us with your sass and natural talent? Yes, please. <laughs> what challenges do you think starting a book when like with starting a book channel what do you think will be the hardest uh for me it's going to be learning how to edit um and then you mentioned consistency reporting on a schedule should be interesting we'll see we'll see how that goes uh when did you start reading again neither of us has any memory of that where do you read this is interesting because we read in fairly different ways so um so because all of my pleasure reading for school, I read physical books and articles. So physically reading things is not a good time for me. So pleasure books are purely an audiobook form. So that's anywhere that I can have my headphones plugged in every time I'm driving. Um, anytime I'm on the move really is a book is being consumed. I'm a lot more stationary with my reading. Um, I read a lot of physical books, but I also read a lot on my phone actually, because I had a Kindle and then it died and I haven't replaced it. And I just got used to reading on my little itty bitty screen, which is probably really bad for my eyes, but you know. What kind of books do you like to read? We're both kind of all over the place. Yeah, so that should be interesting for this channel. Just yeah, You guys won't get any, any consistency on that front. So <laughs> I hope you like a big old all over the place situation. Yeah. Um, Okay, so one of the things we really wanted to talk about that we're very excited to do for this year is the 2019 Reading Women Challenge. So the Reading Women Challenge is from, unsurprisingly, the Reading Women, who are Kendra Winchester and Autumn Privet, and they have a podcast that invites you to reclaim half the bookshelf with books by or about women, which is really darling. They have an Instagram, they have a YouTube. Uh, both of those are linked below because they give further details on their 2019 challenge. There's 24 different categories in the challenge. Um, and we're gonna link to, I think it was Kendra made a video 
discussing each of the categories and some of her recommendations. Um, and also she talked about there's a, a Goodreads group for the challenge that we're both a part of. So also be linked below. Yes, we'll be linked below. So for the first book of the challenge, we actually both read The Bell Jar because it had been on our list for years and years and we've both been kind of putting it off. <laughs> really dreading it, actually. I haven't been dreading it. I just wanted to be in the right headspace. And we had fairly different reactions, especially to the first half of the book. Um, do you want to talk about your reaction to like, the, in the first part of the book, she is in New York City on a kind of like women's fashion magazine internship. So I found her incredibly annoying. <laughs> um, and it's not that like, it's not that I didn't like her. I, I, she was a compelling read, but she was just annoying. And I think part of it was, so I attended a women's college and a lot of the stuff she talks about still very much exists. Like, don't, don't get me wrong, progressive, amazing, wonderful. But a lot of that stuff, the, the kind of social dynamics still are very much present. So it was a little like, oh, the worst parts of that experience being relived, like, why am I reading this? Yeah, it was fine after I got out of the New York part. The New York part was just so annoying. See, okay, but for me, I loved the New York part because a few summers ago, I had an internship in Washington, D.C. And it was kind of a similar situation where I was getting all these opportunities. I was rooming with like four other girls. There was five of us crammed into this like tiny two bedroom apartment. Um, but the whole time I had that like in the back of my mind, this fear that I was going to waste the opportunity in the same way that Esther did, because I've certainly done that um, in parts of my life. And she talks about just this like all these wonderful things are happening, but she feels like she's not taking advantage. Like she can't take advantage. She has a hard time just leaving her room. She just has that typical like depressive mental state where nothing has any joy or you're just not interested, even though intellectually, you know, this is an amazing time in my life and I should be getting everything out of it. So I think this might be why she annoyed me. And it's that she was living out the thing. And this was a, an overarching theme in the book is that the social pressures were a really big problem and they factored in. And I feel like college is a really important time of life where you kind of figure out how to negotiate living your own life and choosing which social pressures you actually let influence your life. And she was just at such a point where she didn't have the capacity to kind of contend with it. And so it was very much like, you know how we watch those college movies now where it's like, everybody gets drunk and has sex. And like, actually, whose college experience is that? It's like maybe 20% of the college population. Like, right. maybe 20%. We are actually the generation having the least amount of sex. This is not everyone's college experience. Um, and so it's one of those things where it's like, she it was in such a vulnerable place that she let these ideas of what she was supposed to enjoy really influence it. And that meant that she didn't actually seek it. Like even New York, what what was it? The when when was this taking place? New York in the sixties? I yeah. Yeah. New York in the sixties, while gritty and scary in a lot of places, had a lot to offer. And mm -hmm. she could have found something that suited her better but again you know depression's tough where you're like oh I should just do this thing that I'm supposed to enjoy and then you feel bad about even worse about yourself because you're like but I don't enjoy it <laughs> yeah well and I think just like knowing like I'm sure she knew that like there was something in the city that would have suited her better but she just couldn't get the motivation to go seek it out and I just so related to that um and then I think we both related to later on, like as the book continues, her sort of descent into this really dark place. And I think that Sylvia Plath just captures that, um, that spiral. And that oh, I do want to note, um, for those of you who have not read, do note that not only does this have someone going through the process of mental breakdown, it also has scenes of rape that I actually kind of love the way Plath handled it, where I didn't end up getting triggered because 
a lot of it was kind of the way the mental processes happens during it where you're like don't engage don't engage don't engage like this isn't actually happening like just mm -hmm. get out and then she didn't address it at all after I was like yeah. okay that's actually really true to form and for a lot of us in college who did have mental breakdowns and were sexually assaulted I felt like that was really true to reality where mm -hmm. <laughs> don't engage just suppress that shit suppress hard I think what I was left with after finishing the book was this line in the very last chapter she says but I wasn't sure I wasn't sure at all how did I know that someday at college in Europe somewhere anywhere the bell jar with the stifling distortions wouldn't descend again and that oh that just rings so true like I feel like I live my life with the bell jar hanging a few feet above and I'm just waiting for it to descend. Right now I'm in a really good place and it feels like maybe the bell jar is like maybe 20 feet up there but it's always in the back of my mind that I could just wake up one day in that place again. Well Sorry. don't worry because I will be stuck in it with you. You can't be rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the fly among the plants. <laughs> In the top of the bell jar. <laughs> Just bored to see that annoying little fly bugging you until you you pull up the bell jar again. I think I agree with Kelsey that I was left with this kind of um, both simultaneously hopeful and hopeless situation, and I don't know how to describe a better resolution to that where. It is, it is this kind of waiting game. Like you really just have to celebrate the times that you're healthy and you're not in the bell jar and you're not in that place and just, you know, try and not engage with that fear that at any, at any morning you might wake up and it's, it's down over you again and you're trapped. Um, yeah, but yeah. also don't read the audiobook version. <laughs> will, this is one time when I will be like, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh no! <laughs> because Maggie Gyllenhaal, while a commendable actress in her own right, yeah, is yeah. a super shitty narrator. Okay. Just so the character was already annoying, and <laughs> Gyllenhaal's voice was like nails on a chalkboard. It was awful. So don't do it. Don't do it. I had to listen on three times sped up speed. Like I was just trying to power through. It was not good. It's a physical copy. I will second. I will actually second. Go to your used bookstore. Go to your library. Get get the ebook or the physical copy. Before we go, E has a shout out for you. So I wanted to shout out the Reading Roads because I was looking through a couple of folks' uh, reviews of the Bell Jar, and because I, you know, my thoughts were still all over the place. I was struggling to resolve the unhappy feelings about this book for various reasons and I discovered the Reading Roads review and he makes himself super vulnerable and I just was like yeah I'm here for this so power to you and thank you for your review and it really clarified things for me and I hope you all will go and visit his site or it's called a channel on YouTube I will get the lingo down go check out his channel we'll link it below <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for joining us, and we will be back in a little while with um, hopefully some progress on the 2019 Reading Women Challenge.